Well, kia ora, guys. Um, thanks, and thanks for having us at Enjoy. Um, Enjoy's been around for 20 years. It's uh, different from the big public galleries. It's, it's not a dealer gallery. Um, it sometimes gets called an artist-run space, but I sense it's a little bit different than that. How would you describe it, Sophie? I describe Enjoy as a contemporary art space. Um, so we have really strong connections to that grassroots community, that um, artist-run space community, but then we also um, are publicly funded and we've been running for quite a long time now. And we do a variety of different activities. So we have a regular exhibition program, we have talks and workshops, and then we're also really interested in cultivating discussion within um, mm. contemporary art practice. So we. Um, produce a lot of small run um, print publications as well as online texts that give people um, some points of entry into um, thinking about contemporary art practice. Um, and our focus is on sort of emerging to mid-career artists. What, what, when we say emerging, what is that? Because I, I think of, when I think <laughs> of Enjoy, a lot of the people you show probably have been through art school and they're yes. maybe a yeah. few years out or something like that. Yes, yeah, that can that can kind of be what emerging means in, in one sense, but it can also be people who have, you know, had different careers and then they're sort of going into the arts and establishing a practice for themselves. Um, but yeah, we generally um, exhibit with people who um, are earlier on in the stages of developing what it is that they're really interested in. Yeah. And we like to support people to, um, I guess when they're in that phase, to take some risks and really um, push their practice forward um, and we also like to support people who are perhaps a bit more established to come here and do something a little bit different and also to oh, share see. knowledge with people who you know might be looking to them for um, some guidance or um, maybe a model of what it looks like to be practicing yeah. um, in contemporary art or writing about it or curating. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I can think of people like Mata Aho Collective or Yona Lee who've pretty getting established, big, they're getting big gigs now who've had early shows here. Um, Simon, we're in the library here. There's a kind of a component here which is very much, of a, I guess, supporting artists in terms of sh the sharing of information and more ephemeral material. So we've uh, collected books since um, we were established 20 years ago. Most of the collection was most made up of uh, donations, so it's a kind of patchy history. In the last year or so, we've sort of doubled in size. Um, so it kind of tells a story of um, contemporary art through the last 20 years. Um, right. So there's exhibition catalogues, books by artists, books by designers, um, mostly from Aotearoa, some from overseas as well. Right, okay. The, um, the idea as well with um, putting a lot of work into this library space was that people could kind of come here, um, they can sit around the table like we're doing, and they can share um, thoughts or publications or they can browse, so yeah. it's, um, it's very much, the idea was that it could be a space for our audience and for the public to, you know, sit down and have a cup of tea or something as well. Yeah, yeah, really quite vital kind of public space in that sense, yeah, and libraries are under threat. Um, you're, you're both curators and have worked in, in other places and I know that you'll both be moving on sometime. Um, and that's been something I've really enjoyed about Enjoy in the way that it provides a place for people to grow as curators and, and gallery managers and, 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 and move on. Um, that, that strikes me as a really special thing about the model, the, the Enjoy model. Mm. You agree? It is. It kind of keeps things ticking over and it means that people are coming into the roles here and they're sort of able to put their own stamp on what they think um, and Joy should be focusing on for a period of time. Um, we also have a board of trustees who sort of, you know, uh, oversee um, the, the governance of Enjoy as a space. And then so we're very much in the day-to-day the -day operations um, and we learn while we're on the job. And then um, we also have uh, volunteers and interns who work here too. So mm. um, it's very much a space for for learning for the people who work here as well yeah. as um, people that might come and participate in other ways. Yeah. 20 years old this year for Enjoy, which is quite a great track record. Um, uh, the gallery, as I remember, started, or the space, started um, in an upstairs space on, on Cuba Street across from Slow Boat Records and then moved into uh, the building that houses the McLeavy Gallery for some years, historic space. It's been quite wedded 
to the Cuba Street area really. Did you, this is a new move here to Left Bank, did you want to stay in, in this area? Was that part of the plan? Yes, definitely, yes. Yeah. So um, we really wanted to stay in this area, but we also wanted um, to move to a space that was bigger and ground level. So it was quite a big challenge actually to find that, but we ended yeah. up finding this space um, up Left Bank Arcade. And um, Simon can t attest to um, it, it being sort of pretty rough around the edges when we... Um, <laughs> in a pretty raw state when we moved in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've done a lot of work to, um, to fit this new space out, but we really wanted um, to maintain that connection to Cuba Street um, and particularly, you know, the, the people that are sort of wandering around here and looking for um, interesting things to encounter, um, but also, um, you know, being a bit more public and accessible um, and you know, sort of street facing with yeah. that outlook um, is a really exciting thing for us. And we um, we were just talking about how people have been, you know, interacting with us in a slightly different way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. People will often look in the windows and think, "What's this?" <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations and happy birthday. Thank you. Um, Georgie, I'd like to maybe ask you about this painting behind us, mm -hmm. um, which I think has kind of come out of lockdown. Is that part of the yes. story? Yes, yes. It's, um, it came directly out of lockdown, actually. Um, I was reading a book called Surreal Friends, um, which is about three artists, um, three surreal artists, like Leonora Carrington and Remedia Svaro and um, Katie Horner. And they'd come together during a turbulent time and started um, talking and making art together and that right. um, directly influenced this because um, all the people that kind of serendipitously ended up with us in lockdown in our house um, I felt like we all needed to be together at that time like everything was feeling really um, charged and meaningful and we would often come together and um, put on these kind of like ritualistic meals and wow. yes. um, there was yeah, lots of things going on like that, and I wanted to honour that by um, depicting it in a painting. So. Oh, that's really, really yeah. beautiful. And what's the title of the work? Um, and holds us at the centre while the spiral unwinds. Um, that's a lyric from an old song that I used to love, and I was just thinking about um, how we're all being kind of held together by being together, but then as everything was around us and in the world and in our personal selves was also unspiralling and then we're able to kind of hold each other together in some sense but also hold each other while we're unspiralling as well and yeah. re-spiralling. Um, to my last two paintings because it's kind of the third in that trilogy um, which is yeah just about doing um, inner and outer work on my psyche and so yeah I wanted to link it um, mm. Stylistically to those. Is, is yeah. this painting something you feel particularly an affinity to in terms of as a way of, of expressing your ideas? Yes, but I only do about one a year because it takes so much out of me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like I get um, a lot of energy from it, but it also completely drains me because it's I have to give it everything. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not doing that many paintings, but it is my favourite mode of communication. Well, this work isn't just a painting, at least in how it's installed. It's so, I mean, with um, the literally unwinding, I love the way this is hung. So people viewing might notice that it actually is slowly moving. And the same before we started, it mm. it's moving. The more people are in space, the more it moves, maybe. Yeah, some days it sort of just hangs out on this angle. And then other days when people are sort of moving around in the space, particularly, it starts to sort of um, move around on its axis a little bit which I think is um, quite appropriate for mm -hmm. the, the work as well. But when we were installing it, you wanted it to be really kind of like tight and tense, mm. um, yeah, which right. we managed to achieve. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting because with that tension, there kind of comes this really gentle, organic sort of motion to the work, mm. which I think um, adds a lot when people are experiencing. How did the idea for that installation come about? 
Mm. Almost your chips. <laughs> yeah. um, it's also something that I've done for the, uh, those two other paintings that I talked about. And um, I think it was inspired, like I saw the way my partner was hanging her um, TV works or like video works. And they were kind of in the middle of the room and um, suspended down from a rod, I think, or ch and a chain. And then I wanted to take it further and bring it down from the ground as well and have the double. And also the, the monitors are heavier so they wouldn't move and I needed that extra kind of, yeah. And basically I just mm. wanted to take my paintings off the wall because I was getting yeah. to, yeah, into the wall. It's nice and um, there's a whole lot of diverse work in this show. So if you've curated it, um, tell us about the title and the kind of concept behind the show. Um, so the concept for the show was to explore and dig a little deeper into um, the idea of a creative um, spark or the idea of creative energy and how we sort of talk about that and understand it in our, in our mm. lives. Um, so I started talking with a group of artists about this exhibition um, last year, um, including Georgette, and um, I had a wonderful um, lunchtime meeting with, um, I use the term meeting quite loosely, um, <laughs> with Annie McKenzie, who's in the show, and um, this was before the exhibition really had a title or had kind of a solid framework, and she was talking to me, um, we're talking about this idea of a fire burning, or um, you know, the metaphors that we use to describe um, some of these things. Um, and Annie uh, said to me, oh, have you ever sort of seen a thermit, which is a weird oh, um, yes. New Zealand invention I'd never heard of. Oh, and it's a, um, it's like a camping kettle that you um, can get. And you, uh, it's essentially like a kettle for making a pot of tea when you're out in the wilderness and you light a little fire in the bottom of it. And you see, it, I have one at home. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I had never heard of it before, so she drew me a little sketch um, in my notebook, um, which sort of became like a um, something I referred back to quite a lot while thinking about this exhibition, um, and also the relationships with the artists in the show, including Annie. So um, there is a lot of diverse work. It's sort of not really held together by any particular medium, and every practice in the show is quite different. Yeah. So um, we have uh, Annie's work. Um, sitting next to us, which is a uh, fruit loaf on a shelf that's been cut in two, and it has a handwritten message um, on the shelf that says, um, refers to a voice message that people can ask to listen to in the gallery office. Um, and that voice message uh, is something that Annie um, initially talked to me a little bit about. It came out of a quite tense conversation that she had with a family friend. Um, talking about how to make a, a life and a living out of being an artist, mm -hmm. um, which I think a lot of us who work in, in this field can kind of relate to that in some sort of way. And also just the experience of talking to someone you love and then having a bit of a disconnect mm -hmm. there that might emerge and that being quite difficult, but then also I think for any that spurred on a lot of thoughts. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. and then we also have uh, a um, large scale painted uh, wall work by Imogen Taylor and Sue Hillary. So, um, they have collaborated to um, make a work. So, um, they're um, partners and they um, have been uh, thinking about um, their collaboration as um, an architect and a painter and thinking about the body. Um, the politics of the body, in particular queer politics. So um, we've got this really large work behind us that stretches mm. along the whole wall. And then there are um, a couple of different videos by Lee Ming Hu, um, some sculptural work by Ashley Topaki, um, which is in the back corner of the gallery. And then we've got a video work by Salote Tawale in the back um, gallery space. So um, there's a lot of uh, diversity in the mediums and approaches that people are taking and also where they're coming from coming into the show so mm. yeah fantastic thanks for joining us <laughs>